What's up everyone, my name is Ron from Comics and Stuff and for this episode we are going over the G.I. Joe Classified series, Clutch with Vamp, which is the multi-purpose attack vehicle. And on this channel guys, we love vehicles. And we love G.I. Joes. So, of course I had to get this. And I gotta say that I am quite happy with the package so far. Although there is no embossment or anything like that, there is lamination work all throughout including that nice picture of Clutch with the van vehicle in the front. There is a window showing off Clutch right there to the side, G.I. Joe classified series at the bottom along with the star right there. To the top we do got the number which is of course the number 112 and the G.I. Joe star. To the bottom there's barcode, legalities and stuff like that. To the left hand side there is nice artwork of Clutch along with the number 112 and to the right hand side we got the same artwork, but done in the more profile way of G.I. Joe, you know, that blue silhouette stuff. But to the back, we do see Clutch, we do see the vamp, and they do show how tall Clutch is, which is 6.3. Of course, we're going to test that theory out once we open the package. It also shows the, you know, accessories and all that. Now that we went through the package and everything though, let's open it up, check out the vehicle, and check out the figure. Now before going into detail with both Clutch and the Vamp, I wanted you guys to see how everything in the box looked like pre-assembly because I do think that assembly is going to take some time and I want to keep this video as short as possible. That being said, it does come with an instruction book to help you along your journey and it's pretty self-explanatory though guys. There's tabs, there's ports for you to put stuff on it and all of that. However, it's going to be useful. Clutch right here does come with two accessories, which is his handgun and his helmet, but we're going to go into detail with that later because the rest of the accessories come in this handy dandy G.I. Joe crate that we're all accustomed to seeing already. There is the number 112, G.I. Joe star right there, 112, and finally we got Clutch with Vamp multi-purpose attack vehicle. If you're wondering if there's anything on the sides, there's not guys, but when you open it up, there are two baggies that hopefully includes all the accessories. And both of the baggies already come printed with G.I. Joe and Cobra insignia. So that looks cool. Now finally, we got the vamp itself with four tires and the base body. But now that we saw everything, let's assemble this vamp and see what we got. And here is both Clutch and the Vamp outside of the package. And since there's two things to go through, guys, I'm just going to go through it real quick. We're also going to do it one at a time, starting off with Clutch, who stands in at about six and a half inches, just a tad underneath it. So he does have a little bit of height on him. Now for his accessories, and let me point out, guys, that some of these are just meant for him. A couple of these, though are meant to be mounted on the car. We'll go through it and all of that, but first let's start with his stuff, which is this shotgun. It got some sculpt, got some brown paint and all of that. A nice little port right there to put in effects. What I don't like about it though, is that it's very malleable. I also don't like that you can't really put it on him without him just grabbing it. Like he would have to grab it in order for it to be on him, which is something that can't be said about the rest of the accessories. I mean, he does have this monkey wrench and this monkey wrench does got some nice sculpt, got some nice paint and all of that. But I do like that you could just put it right there on his monkey wrench holster and that works well. I mean, it's a little tight grip on it, so it won't be loose or anything like that. Now, another accessory that could be put on him is this handgun. Same like the shotgun guys, it got some scope, got some nice brown paint, and it also got a port for effects. But thankfully, you could put it right there on his holster by the chest. So that's cool. He also comes with a helmet. No paint, but it does got really good sculpt, and I like that a lot. It fits him rather lovely. And what I like guys, is that, you know, he doesn't come with alternate faces or anything like that. But this helmet switches it up and switches it up nicely. However, he also got something else that'll switch up his face, 
which is this covered helmet. As you guys can see, got some nice paint, some nice detail. The visor is painted rather lovely. The sculpt right there looks good. And you would probably think that, oh, you would switch it out, but no. This goes directly over his head, like so. And let me tell you, that fits rather lovely. And it doesn't look oversized or anything like that. It looks like somebody riding a motorcycle. So I do really like how this came out. And I'm going to see later on if it fits other Joes and stuff. But yeah, that's three different looks you could have for his face without actually including a face. <laughs> so I do like how that all came out. But now we're going to go through the stuff that is not only meant to you know, for him to grab, but it's also meant to be mounted on this vehicle. Starting off with the shovel. Now the shovel doesn't got no paint or anything. Very minimal sculpt. And it is thankfully made of a more sturdier plastic. And it goes right on the hood. Let me see right there. Yeah, like so. So, there's clips, guys, right there. I'll go through that when we go through the car. Now, another thing that goes on the vehicle itself is this axe. Again, this one is a very, very... This is perhaps my least favorite accessory just because there is absolutely almost no paint except for the axe itself right there. But it's not even flat right there or anything like that. And again, it's made of that malleable plastic. But you could put it in the back of the vehicle, like so. But yeah, it bends and everything when you do try to put it on. Now, finally, oh no, there's still another thing. <laughs> we also have these fuel canisters, at least that's what I'm thinking. Again, he could hold them and everything like that. There is a nice little flammable sign right there so that's why i'm thinking it's fuel or something and it goes in the back of the vamp there are two guys let me mention that but i just took out one so you guys get the point there's two both of them don't look much different to the other now finally we do have this nice little fire extinguisher that got some sculpt some paint very cool, and it could be used with other figures. I mean, and you know, it's a fire extinguisher. Very much needed, especially if there's a fire. And it goes in this little hook, if you guys could see that right there. The way I like to do it is I don't like to put it right on the clip, guys. I like to go to one end and then slide it through. And it kind of grabs it best around the middle part of the fire extinguisher. I mean, if you guys can see that, there we go. So that's pretty dang cool. Now for Clutch himself, let's go through it before we enter into the vamp. Because let's face it, the vamp is what we're probably most excited about. Clutch though looks very good. I mean, his face. That's not a bad face sculpt. Got some nice beard. Some sculpt on the hair. Even though they try to flatten it out in order to make this helmet be a bit more snug. I do like how it does look. The tattoos. Very nicely applied. And it's not like, you know, blurry or anything. You could see what it is. On both sides. This watch right here, by the way, guys is not removable if you're wondering about that. There is texture and everything sculpted around his vest. The nice American flag right there, nicely applied. Sculpt on the pants, nice texture. Various different, you know, stuff that you would need in order to expect a vehicle. The knee pads are painted, the shins right here. Got some nice paint by the boots. Overall, I am not mad with how Clutch here came out. Not mad at all. Got some nice little detail right there on the vest, back pockets. This is a floaty piece, 
which is a bit annoying guys because it just keeps floating it's hard to get a real tight spot where it just stays there but it's whatever now when it comes to articulation he does have a double ball peg at the top of his head and one ball peg double ball peg whatever in the bottom so the tilt is rather lovely like really lovely it means yeah you just get really good posability especially those poses that make it look like what are you talking about you know so i do like that now going back both of them in conjunction it's okay it could have been better but i'll take it going down a bit better than going back and of course you're gonna get rotation now shoulders does bring him above t pose there is a full 360 that you could do butterfly joints in there that get you a little back and a little forward and thankfully the vest does kind of hide it so i don't mind it at all looks okay there is a bicep cut that works double jointed pinless elbows which is my only gripe to tell you the truth guys about this figure is that the joint for the elbows is very very mismatched from yeah both his forearm and his bicep also another thing is that the greens from the torso and the butterfly joint do look a bit different this one's a bit more shinier but again the vest does hide that this one this part i'm really annoyed about that just doesn't look right but anyway double jointed pinless elbows does get you a little bit but not too much there is a swivel and i'm thinking vertical hinge yeah vertical hinge on this hand guys or you know regular hinge on the other one so that's cool again these wrist parts do not come off if you're wondering now there is an ab crunch underneath there with a ball at the waist so the ab crunch gets you only one click again the vest right here impedes it back yeah it's barely even a click but when you use the bottom joint yeah i'll take that forward i'll take that too and of course you're gonna get rotation from the waist right there now there is drop down hips and the drop down hips first of all you see what I'm talking about? This kind of impedes everything. Let's take off this wrench just because he don't need it no more. But yeah, one leg goes pretty much far that the other one is again impeded by this little part. And I don't, I can't seem to bring it any lower. So that's about as far as he could go. Now kicking forward with the drop down action. Yeah. Pretty much horizontal. Doesn't really do much. A tad back. There is a bit of swivel there. Die cut that works just fine. Double jointed pinless knees that get you great range. And there is a boot cut where it's meant to be at the top of the boot. So awesome. Ankles go up this much, back that much and there is pivot again guys overall i do like clutch however i do not like those elbow joints that he's using but the paint is spot on the sculpt looks good he looks good i like his accessories but now that clutch is out of the way let's go through this vamp right here first of all let's do the measurements let's take out this ruler right here because it's a bit larger than 12 inches to tell you the truth it's a little over 13 inches i'm gonna say probably even 13 inches point blank yeah 13 inches point black so that's not bad now height wise height wise it'll be about counting to the top of the lights i'm gonna say that's about seven inches a tad underneath it so that's not bad 
And now going in the front, we got a nice grill right here. I'm gonna go by tire by tire, guys, over here, and it's about seven inches. Yeah, more or less. If you're not going by the tire, then it's like around six and a half inches. So the measurements are good for a vehicle. Very, very good. Now for the vehicle itself though, it does got good scope. A lot of the things you will have to peg in, like you saw how I did with the shovel, there is this package that goes right on the hood. By the way, guys, the hood could open with a very, very basic motor being underneath there. You do got a hook right here in order for you to drag vehicles out of the mud that you could also, let's see how you bring it up. Oh, right here. There's a little wheel for you to bring it right back in. There are a couple of loops right here in order for you again to pull stuff and everything that could be moved. Sculpt looks good. There is some paint right there. You got the GI Joe star. You got the procedures 5641 GI Joe and it does look rather clean. I do like that there is a gradient on the windshield going to a blue. And by the way, guys, yeah, it could be put down, could be put up. One thing that I don't like is these lights that clip on are easy to clip off. Also, another thing that I don't like is that, yeah, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it's mirrors, but it's not real mirrors, guys. And you could tell one of mine's got an air bubble on it. So that's a bit annoying. However, I will say that there's some nice detail up in the dashboard right there. And I also say that this could move up and down. The steering wheel itself could turn, but it does nothing. If you're wondering if it moves the wheels, it don't. Which by the way, guys, the wheels are rubbery. So that's good, but it just gives a little bit of movement. Not much at all, basically. It does roll, but if you're gonna try to do some drifting picks or something like that expect limitations <laughs> is basically what i'm saying of course the back tire does do the same there is a nice hook right here in case you want to pull some more vehicles and stuff like that let's go to the bottom very 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 basic sculpt in the bottom I do not like that. You know, I'm a vehicle guy. You see them, guys. We got plenty of vehicles in this channel. I do like a nice little sculpt underneath. So, it's whatever, though. Now, the seats aren't cushion or anything. It is just a plastic. Yeah, overall, I like it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to put the actual machine gun up there. But now that the machine gun is out, I just wanted to go through it. You do have ammo packs and these ammo packs slide right in there, which is something I want to say about this machine gun, guys, is that I don't like this. You could tell one of the sides got the number right here. The other one got the number in the inside. Like, why not on the outside? Also, if you could tell... This one is pointing out. This one's pointing at the direction is like, I would expect it to be flipped over basically the opposite of what this one is, but it's not. So it's a small gripe. I'll pick that up right now, <laughs> but it's a gripe. Once you do put it on the vehicle though, there is some mobility both going down a bit, but up not too much, which I don't like because I wanted to take pictures, you know, of it shooting down the Cobra flight pod and everything. And unless the Cobra flight pod is literally right in front of the machine gun. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Also, I want to say there are ports to the machine gun itself right there for effects. If you guys are wondering about that. Yeah. What can I say about this vehicle, guys? I actually love it for the price of it and it bringing clutch and all of that beautiful absolutely beautiful but now that we went through both clutch and the vamp let's do some comparisons with gi joes as well as cobras heck even marvel legends
And for our first comparison, it will actually be with some Marvel Legends, not any G.I. Joes or Cobras or anything, because I do want to see how they look in case you guys want to, you know, customize it in order to be a Wolverine Jeep or something like that. Which, speaking of, we do got two Wolverines right there at the left. I also threw in Spider-Man and Cyclops. I'm also going to do them two at a time, guys, because the passenger side and the driver side, there's basically no difference. There's plenty of leg room for both. So let's see how they fit. As you can see, guys, Wolverine fits lovely inside this vamp. So if you want to customize it and make it into a Wolverine Jeep, you totally can. Now, although he looks good, X-23 does not. I mean, she looks like a child in the vehicle and yeah. She's a bit on the smaller side of Marvel Legends, so I don't think that problem will come across many figures. But Wolverine right here, I'm loving it. As for the Ben Riley Spider-Man and Cyclops, I mean, take a look for yourself. It's pretty much perfect. It looks so natural. Their eye level is basically where I want it to be. And they both use bodies that are, you know, pretty common for Marvel Legends. So that already opens up this vehicle to a wide range of figures. And for this one, I just wanted to show how the Figma variant C little armory figure right here looks like in front of the Jeep because, you know, she's basically a military style figure and all of that. Of course, she got her high school outfit. But anyway, I wanted to see how it looked like. Standing in front of it doesn't look too bad. However, putting her inside of the Jeep, which by the way, guys, I like putting them through the top. Just makes it way more easier and all of that. Yeah. I just think she's a little too short for it. So doesn't look particularly good with her inside, but outside, not so bad. And of course, we're gonna need a Cobra comparison. And I got a nice little lineup here, guys. Right there to the left is the driver from the Stinger vehicle, which by the way, I am in the middle of reviewing it. So stay tuned for that video. We also got Supreme Cobra Commander. We got a Tela Viper and we got the Arctic Bat. And first up is the Stinger driver, of course, sitting on the driver's side and Cobra Commander sitting on the passenger seat. Now, they look good, guys. What could I say? You know, they both fit rather nicely. I don't think any G.I. Joe Classified Series figure is going to have a problem fitting in this vehicle. And Cobras are no exception. And now we're on to slightly bigger members of Cobra with the Cobra Arctic Bat and the Tela Viper. And to tell you the truth, I thought that the Arctic Bat was going to have some problem and you know I thought I was going to have to fidget with it a bit more than I did but he fit in there rather nicely. The only problem that I did have was the side holster for his weapon right there but move there around and all of that and boom problem solved. Again they fit rather good they look rather good and yeah now that we're done with Cobras let's see how G.I. Joe's look. And finally we are at the G.I. Joe comparison and I went from smallest to biggest to give you a good range, guys, starting with Lady J, Snake Eyes, Clutch himself, of course, and Roadblock. And basically, they look great in front of it. I mean, it's made for it, guys. So let's just see how they look like inside. Here we got Snake Eyes and Lady J inside the vehicle. And before showing it off, guys, I wanted to point out that the vamp does have suspension. It's something that I failed to mention before and all of that. Now, I chose Snake Eyes over Duke because Duke and Clutch got similar body types and I just wanted you guys to see, you know, a wider range and everything. I mean, we know Clutch fits, you know, but I was a little worried that Lady J wouldn't. I thought she would suffer the same fate as X-23 and although she does, you know, seem a little short for it, it still looks okay. I mean, it works and all of that. Now, let's see how the other Joes fit. And finally, we're at the helmeted crew with Clutch and Roblox. Now, of course, Clutch is going to fit perfectly. You know, he came with the vehicle. But Roblox is the biggest figure we've done so far. And I do think that's the limit that this vamp could handle. I mean, his helmet is kind of sticking a little out the top. You could try to fidget around with it some more. But yeah. A figure the size of Roblox is the limit for this vehicle. I tried a Marvel Legends Sabretooth. Does not work at all. So be aware of that. So in conclusion, what can I say guys? I absolutely love this set. I mean, for the price of $99.99, you're not only getting an action figure, but you're getting a vehicle. 
and that vehicle fits 112 scale figures pretty dang near perfectly and if you're a follower of this channel then you know this is something we've been searching for for quite some time and although I love it that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a couple of gripes you know a few small ones first of all the elbow joints on clutch is a totally different skin tone than the rest of his arm second of all the machine gun doesn't have a proper gunner position I mean the only way to properly man that gun is through the passenger seat and even then it still looks weird still it's $99.99 and it fits your figures wonderfully so my only regret is that I didn't buy myself a second one and I'm now at the mercy of scalpers but let me know what you guys think if you guys enjoyed the video hit the like comment and subscribe because all of that stuff helps out the channel my name is Ron from comics and stuff and I'll check you guys on the next episode. Peace.